Hello and welcome to my channel, Exceedingly Good Reviews. This is a My Thoughts on video, my thoughts on Impact Wrestling from November the 3rd. What a show this was. Uh, we had a, a five match card uh, with plenty of other segments going on during the show. So uh, I will give you a quick run through of what occurred and then give you my overall thoughts. So we opened the show with Scott Damore. He's on the phone getting uh, an injury update on uh, Johnny Bravo, who the previous week was shot at his wedding. Uh, Tommy Dreamer, wearing uh, Sherlock Holmes-inspired uh, clothing, uh, decides that he's going to investigate this murder. And uh, Scott Damore's like, God, I wish someone would shoot me, you know, uh, the stuff I've got to put up with. So, yeah, a mystery is afoot. That's how the show opens. We get our opening graphics and whatnot. Our first match of the night, it's Diana Perrazzo. Uh, taking on Su Young, uh, okay, for the Knockouts title, a rematch for the Knockouts title. Remember, there was the legal proceedings going on. Uh, Scott Dunmore convinced that rather than going that that, that route, that route, uh, how about you just have your rematch for the title, which he agreed to. Uh, so Su Young and uh, Diana Perazzo have a decent match. Uh, Kimberly slides a chair into the ring. Uh, it's fought for between uh, Sue Young and Diana Perazzo. Uh, the chair hits Diana Perazzo when they're struggling between it, and the referee has no choice but to throw out the match, disqualifying Sue Young. So Diana Perazzo wins, but Sue Young keeps the belt because it was a disqualification finish. Uh, Diana wins, but Sue Young retains. Sue uses the chair against Kimberly, uh, and uh, yeah, the goes to use it against Diana Perazzo, but Diana Perazzo escapes. So yeah. Uh, an okay opener, but wasn't great. wasn't fantastic. Bit of a lazy finish. Uh, but this feud continues. So let's see where else it goes. We then see Rhino and Heath in uh, Scott Demore's office, I'm assuming. Uh, it, it's all about the contract. But Scott can clearly see that Heath is uh, banged up. He's injured. He's not going to be uh, cleared to compete for a while. So uh, he can't let him sign the contract yet. Heal up. Get yourself better, and this contract will be waiting for you when you are ready, when you are good and ready and 100% again. Uh, yeah, so I've got to say, a little note here, I like this Scott the More character. I, I, I really do. Uh, his on-screen character that he's portraying, this management figure. I quite like it. It's, it you know, he, he does a good job. Uh, second match of the night, it's Chris Bay taking on Trey Miguel. Now, these two, I really like these two individuals. These two and TJP, I think, are three incredibly gifted individuals in the ring with their technical ability and whatnot. This match, however, just didn't seem to to, to tweak my interest, to, to, to click with me. Uh, it was a very plain match, in my opinion, I thought, between these two. Uh, Chris Bay ends up hitting, hitting a cutter on uh, Trey Miguel and picking up the victory here. So good for Chris Bay, but... Very plain, very, very bog standard match in my opinion. Nothing great, nothing special. Uh, an addition of a locker room talk with Madison Reed and her co host, person, assistant, Johnny Swinger. Uh, and they're going to be interviewing, uh, they're going to be interviewing, sorry, uh, Tennille Dashwood and Jordan Grace because these two individuals, they still need a tag team partner for the Knockouts tag team uh, title tournament that's coming up in a couple of weeks. So uh, they still need tag team partners. Madison Rain uh, puts the idea out there that, well, hang on a minute, why don't you two team together? You two are both great individuals. You might work. Jordan Grace seems interested in this idea. Seems to be entertaining the idea, but Tennille instead ends up propositioning Madison Rain. We should be tag team partners. And Madison Rain seems to accept. So it looks like Tennille Dashwood and Madison Rain are going to be a tag team. Jordan Grace still left on her own. She storms off. Is she going to have no choice but to go back with Aaliyah Edwards? They didn't seem to work when they teamed together. So, uh, yeah, let's just see what occurred for Jordan Grace. Maybe she'll uh, team up with a previous knockout, uh, a legend of the TNA uh, days, maybe. Yeah, okay, maybe, please. Uh, so, yeah, let's see what goes on there. Uh, Dreamer is uh, backstage interviewing uh, the senior referee. Uh, then he's interviewing uh, Johnny Swinger, but Cody Dina said it's meant to be my interview. Oh, wait, wait, you know, I've got to get mine out of the way, blah, 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 because we've got a match. Who's your match with? It's Johnny Swinger. It's Cody Dina against Johnny Swinger late on in the night. Uh, yeah, I could have done without this. It was just pointless, this little segment, this little bit. Uh, we then think that we're going to be getting the Defeat Rohit Challenge. 
Our next match of the night is going to be a defeat Rohit challenge. Rohit Raju in the ring saying, you know, I've beaten this person, beaten that person. You know, let's have a new challenger. Someone I've never faced before. TJP answers. Now, TJP isn't in his ring gear, so we kind of knew that this wasn't going to be a match. Uh, they end up cutting a promo on each other. TJP stating that, you know, he, he feels that he's deserving of the X Division title. He deserves to be. Look at all my accolades that I've done, that I've achieved before. Uh, I want the X Division title. Rohit Raju's like, you know, I've beaten you, so you know, back of the line, it's time for fresh faces, someone new. Uh, yeah, these, TJP, uh, you know, ends up throwing his hot cup of tea in uh, Rohit's face. That's not very nice. Uh, these two come to blows. TJP stands tall as he poses with the X Division title. Uh, okay. I, I like TJP and I want to see him as X Division champion, but this segment just didn't seem to... I don't know, maybe I just wasn't in the mood for this episode. I don't know. But uh, yeah, it just didn't seem to click with me either. Uh, we get a Chris Saban interview. Chris Saban uh, going on about how all these tag teams now uh, want to isolate him. You know, they want to get rid of Alex Shelley. They want to isolate Chris Saban. Uh, and he kind of issues an open challenge to either AC Romero or Larry D, whoever. Uh, I think it's Larry D that he's got a match with uh, next week. So yeah, okay, whatever. Uh, Rohit is backstage, he's not happy, and he's arguing with Scott Damore about what occurred with TJP in the ring. TJP interrupts, and Scott makes a match uh, between the two for the X Division title. But if TJP loses, he can never face Rohit Raju for the X Division title as long as Rohit is the X Division champion. He can never compete for the X Division title as long as Rohit holds it. Okay. Uh, third match of the night. We thought the defeat Rohit was going to be our third match. Nothing occurred there, so... Uh, our third match of the night is Ethan Page taking on Doc Gallows. Ethan Page of the North, one half of the uh, Impact Tag Team Champions, taking on one half of the Good Brothers, Doc Gallows. This was a good physical match. Uh, as you would expect, these two big, strong individuals. Uh, Doc keeps frustrating Ethan uh, early on in the match. Uh, Josh Alexander on the outside helps uh, cause a distraction on Doc, so Ethan gets some offense in. Uh, Doc ends up winning the match, but immediately following the match, Josh Alexander comes in and attacks uh, Doc Gallows. Uh, yeah, Carl makes the save, and yeah, the good brothers stand tall. Okay. And these two going for a tag team title match, is it? You know, I won't mind if that is it. You know, that's where they're going. Okay. Uh, Swoggle interview. He's interrupted by uh, Brian Myers, and Brian shoves Swoggle. What more is there to say on that, you know? Looks like those two are going to be going towards a match. Fourth match of the night. Cody Dina versus Johnny Swinger. Set up early in the night. Uh, yeah. Ends up. Uh, Johnny Swinger ends up hit, hitting Cody with his fanny pack behind the referee's back. It's a loaded fanny pack apparently. Uh, it must have a brick in there or something. Who knows. Uh, and he ends up getting the win. Uh, so Johnny Swinger beats Cody Dina. Okay. Was what it was. A little fun match. But nothing more than that. Out comes Moose with the TNA title. The TNA title hasn't been taken seriously. In Moose's opinion, he believes the TNA title is the most important title in Impact Wrestling right now. Uh, Rich Swan's Impact Wrestling title is only number two, the only the number two title. Uh, okay, once again, yeah, okay. He shows, uh, you know, he, he goes on about, you know, Rich Swan's belt and whatnot, ends up uh, cutting. Uh, thing about uh, Willie Mack showing what he did to Willie Mack uh, last week and Willie Mack ends up coming out and these two get to come to blows uh, Moose chokes Mack with the camera cable uh, and yeah that segment's over uh, Chris Bay is in the back he's congratulating Rich Swan. Uh, he wants a title shot uh, Eddie Edwards interrupts and ends up uh, going off with uh, Rich Swan because they're tag teaming later in the night uh, Chris Bay's left there, like, you know, well, I wanted a title match. Rich Swan had said, like, you know, I don't, you know, you've got to earn it and whatnot, but, you know, I wouldn't mind seeing Chris Bay against Rich Swan for the uh, Impact Heavyweight title. Uh, we then get uh, Dreamer backstage uh, with his 10, with these 10 individuals. These 10 individuals are the main suspects in the uh, Johnny Bravo shooting. Uh, they are Taya Valkyrie, uh, Rosemary, Hernandez, Cody Dina. Falabar, Father James Mitchell, Havoc, Larry D, Johnny Swinger, and the senior referee. These are the 10 individuals that are under increased suspicion as being the uh, person who shot Johnny Bravo. Uh, okay, so let's see where that goes. See, we could have had this segment, yeah. 
ignoring the segment earlier on where he's interviewing the senior ref, Johnny Swinger and uh, Cody Dina. We could have done without that. Fifth match of the night, the fifth and final match of the night, the main event. It's Sammy Callahan and Eric Young against Rich Swan and Eddie Edwards. Sammy Callahan and Eddie Ed, uh, Sammy Callahan and um, uh, Eric Young work really well together as a tag team. These two unhinged, very volatile, very uh, unpredictable individuals actually work really well together. Uh, Sammy and Eric both go for the tandem pile drives at one point, but Eddie and Rich re reverse them and lock in tandem single leg Boston Crabs. Sammy stops Eric Young from uh, tapping. Uh, during that moment, because obviously Sammy Callahan uh, is looking to get an opportunity at Rich Swan's uh, world title. Uh, obviously, he doesn't want to lose here. Uh, Ken Shamrock ends up coming out and he attacks Rich on the outside of the ring. This uh, leads to a distraction, so Sammy eventually hits a power driver on Eddie Edwards and pins him uh, to win and uh, you know solidify earn that title shot. So yeah, that's how the show ends. Overall. Uh, it was a very poor show, I thought. A lot of the segments could have done without. A lot of the matches were just bog-standard matches or just below par. Like I said, I don't know if I just wasn't quite into this show uh, straight from the get-go. Uh, my belt of the night, it's got to be the main event, the tag match. I was uh, pleasantly surprised and impressed with how uh, Sammy Callahan and Eric Young worked together. Uh, standing tall at the end of the night with Ken Shamrock as well. This looks like a formidable three-man group. Uh, so yeah, that was interesting. But overall, that doesn't make up for the rest of the show being poor. It was a poor show. Yes, I'm intrigued to see what goes on with Moose and the TNA title and Willie Mack. But I anticipate Moose will retain that. And further down the line, we'll get a TNA world title against Impact world title unification match at some point down the line. So I can see Moose keeping hold of that. The swaggle Brian Myers, not really bothered about. Uh, even Page, Doc Gallows. Yeah, it's slow build to the t eventual tag team title match that they, these two will have. Uh, the Defeat Rohit Challenge, uh, I was high on originally, but not anymore. I want to see TJ, I just want to get the title off him. I don't think he deserves that title. At least not deserving it for a long run. The Chris Bay Trey Miguel match, just below par for me. They, they, these are two great gifted individuals, and they just put on a, a, a below par match. Uh, one of the other highlights other than the main event was obviously the Scott Demore character. I really like uh, how he's portrayed himself as a, manage, a managerial figure, trying to keep the show together, keep the talent uh, booked and uh, on the right track and whatnot. So, yeah, overall, this was a poor show. Yeah, but, yeah, my belt of the night, the main event, Sammy Callahan and Eric Young against Eddie Edwards and Rich Swan. There you go. What more can I say? Those are my thoughts on Impact Wrestling. What are your thoughts on Impact Wrestling? Let me know in the comments, like this video, and hit the subscribe button. Uh, one final thing, I just want to say a big thank you very much for watching. Stay safe and stay classy.